Hi, my name is Jeff Jensen with GoInsurance Tech Support. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a torsional spring in a SOLIDWORKS motion study. Um, so to get started, we'll turn on the motion analysis. Uh, if this option is not available, you need to add it in your add-ins. Uh, to get started, let's throw in some gravity. Uh, make sure that's going in the right direction. And we can actually uh, calculate our study at this point. So we'll see that's rotating as expected uh, for the most part. Um, but what I like to address first when uh, creating a motion study is getting the mate redundancies. We'll see here under next to mates, um, we want to get those to, to zero redundancies. Otherwise, we're, we're basically over constraining the degrees of freedom for our model, which can really lead to unexpected results. Um, so to actually do this, um, I'm just going to delete these existing mates from the motion study and create new ones. Uh, so we'll start out with a concentric mate here. And to position these, I'm just going to select a face and a point rather than um, doing two faces. So if we select two faces, that'll basically over constrain it and we'll still have the uh, mate redundancies here. So now we're at zero mate redundancies and I can rely on my results a little bit more. Uh, so next, um, I like to basically make this look as real as possible. So right now we see we're not really losing any energy as this rocks back and forth like we would see in real life. We'd probably have some uh, dampening due to friction between these two parts. So to kind of simulate that, I'll go ahead and throw in a dampener. Do a torsional, select this face. Start out by leaving the default values. Go ahead and calculate that. We'll see it's not moving, so our our strength on the dampener there is uh, way too high. So let's reduce that. We'll just kind of take a, a guesstimate here. Looking better. We're getting some movement, but let's reduce that a little bit more here. We'll, zero 05 looks like there. I will go with that. It looks a little better. So at least now it stops and doesn't rock back and forth forever. Uh, so we can actually go ahead. Um, I'm going to actually put the free length on this with a with an angle between the two parts. So we can actually push it down uh, with the motor simulating. You know, someone pushing this down, seeing it rocking back, uh, rock rock back and forth. So just make sure that's starting out good still. Now we can go ahead and create our spring. I will do torsional. So this angle that it's at right now will be its free angle. You could change that value here. We'll just leave everything at default. Um, and let's go ahead and simulate pushing this down using a motor on here. Let's reverse that direction. And we just want to go a distance. Let's go like 15 degrees. Uh, let's just do that in 0.5 seconds though. And we'll want to turn this motor off right when we get to the 15 seconds. Otherwise this will basically override uh, override our spring and, and we won't really get any spring action and stuff. So we see this is uh, pushing it down and then the spring is rocking it back and forth. Uh, we, we can uh, to get to keep that from rocking back and forth. We can even add a damper to the spring itself. Let's actually increase this. Let's go 20 degrees. Oh, you know what? I'm stopping that way too early there. There we go. Let's actually bump that back up. That's starting to look pretty good. Um, you can basically play around with your numbers. If you know the, the properties of your spring that you're looking to use, you can adjust those. You could even uh, maybe adjust the K factor here. Uh, see how that looks. Could do cut that in half. You can even uh, plot the results at this angle. Let's go ahead your displacement basically, angular displacement. 
so we can see here that the motor is pushing it down 20 degrees. Then our spring pops it back up and it bounces there a little bit. Um, might even, let's, you can turn, suppress this dampener here and just see what the dampener from the spring looks like itself. You can actually just play with these numbers until you're pretty much happy with what you got. Let's see what that looks like. There we go, getting some nice dampening there. But that's pretty much it. Uh, just kind of playing around with your properties on your torsional spring until you kind of get the behavior you're, you're looking for or the results you're looking for in your plots. I hope you enjoyed watching this uh, video and thanks for watching. Again, this is Jeff Jensen with Gunshare Tech Support. Mm -hmm.